everybody. This is Joe Deli Carpini from the National Weather Service's Boston office located in Norton, Massachusetts. And I'm also a Norwood resident. And I'm here to talk to you a little bit about our winter 20 to 23 and 2024 so far, um, how things have kind of started out and kind of where we're going for the rest of the winter. So we're kind of at the midway point here in January. So we thought we would take a look and kind of see how things are shaping up for the rest of the winter. So to start, let's take a look at some of our temperature data. And this is from the uh, Norwood Airport where we have um, our weather records kind of being kept. And you can see for the most part, um, not a lot of cold this winter so far. A little bit in early December, we dipped down into this blue area, um, which is kind of the area where is below normal temperatures are expected. But we spent a lot of time up here in the pinker shading near the top. And this is kind of above normal temperatures. And in the middle, um, this band is kind of the uh, where we should be. So probably more you know, in the above normal area than below so far. And this goes through about the middle of January. So in December, our average temperature in Norwood was just over 41 degrees and normal is 35 degrees. So that's actually quite a warm month being about six degrees above average. And so far through the middle of January, um, our average temperature has been a little over 35 degrees and our normal is just over 30. So we're above normal in January so far. And keep in mind, these average temperatures take into account the daily high and the daily low for each day. So it's a measure of both the high temperature and the low temperature across uh, about a couple of months for the winter. If we look at precipitation, um, and this is rain and melted snow, probably not much of a surprise here. We are way above normal. You can see the green curve is actually the um, accumulated um, precipitation. Again, that's rain and, and melted snow um, at Norwood Airport. And you can see these little step bumps up is where it actually rained or snowed. Our normal line is the, the uh, brown curve here, which kind of is a steady climb up through the middle of January. You can see we're well above that line right now. For um, December and through the middle of January, our total has been just over 13 inches, which is quite a bit. And our normal is only six inches. So we're running about seven inches above normal. Again, probably not much of a surprise. We've had quite a bit of flooding in December and, and January with a little bit of snowfall in between for good measure. But uh, I'm sure many of you have, you know, we remember the mild storms with a lot of flooded streets, flooded basements. And even the Ponset River uh, went into flood here in the early part of January. If we look at snowfall, probably not much of a surprise, but we are below normal for the year. The, uh, the chart here shows Boston, which has a longer um, snowfall history than we do here in Norwood. So it's a better thing to look at. Um, you can see, again, the green is where we have measurable snow, only a couple of events so far. The brown line is where we should be. So for Boston, the total has been seven and a half inches. The normal is just over 17, so roughly about 10 inches below normal. Here in Norwood, our total has been just over 10 inches, so a little bit more snow than the city of Boston, but our normal is almost two feet by this time. So we're running quite a bit below normal um, as of the middle of January. So we'll kind of, we'll talk about in a few minutes about kind of where we're headed. But we do look at accumulated snow. Remember, remember that we still have a lot of winter to go. We're in the middle of January um, as of this recording. And most of our snow here in Southern New England falls from later January through February and even into early March in some cases. So I'm sure many of you remember the 2014, 2015 winter. Uh, there was very little snow up until about New Year's Day. And then the end of the month, we got hit by successive blizzards uh, with each one almost more than a foot of snow uh, in Jan late January through February again. So um, still a long way to go, but um, you know, there's no guarantee we're gonna see something like that again. Uh, but just it's something to keep in the back of your mind that most of our snow really falls in the second half of the winter. So what about this winter? Well, El Nino has been the big story, as I'm sure many of you have heard. Um, and that refers to the warming of the uh, waters off the Pacific coast of South America. That's down here in this box in the diagram. So when we see that, um, it's called El Nino. And the opposite is La Nina, which was what we saw last winter when the water was colder than average. But in either case, there's a connection between the ocean and the atmosphere, and that results in kind of global weather influences. It influences the jet stream on kind of the global scale. Um, and right now, El Nino is forecast to continue into the spring. Uh, so it'll continue to influence us for the rest of the winter. Now, during winter here in New England, there really is no direct correlation between having an El Nino and, and what the weather pattern will be. Uh, it's more notable in other parts of North America, in particular, the northern tier of states and in Canada, where it tends to be warmer than average. 
along the uh, desert southwest into the Gulf Coast. It tends to be wetter than average and sometimes a little cooler as well. And that's because the Pacific jet stream is really very active in these situations. And that's certainly something we've seen this year. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but this El Nino does provide kind of our global background for the winter. So overall, we, we kind of expect a milder winter in most cases, but we're also in a period of warming temperatures over the past 30 to 50 years and a greater frequency of seeing what we call heavy precipitation, meaning um, an inch or more of rain or even melted snow. So uh, you know, we can look back at past El Ninos, but it's often difficult because our, our background climate is changing too. So you can't make a direct correlation with those years. The other thing I always bring up too is if you remember throughout the 2000s, even the 2010s, we had many active winters, a lot of blizzards, uh, not just 2015, but if you go back 2013 in February, we had a significant blizzard. And you can go back through the years. Those were two decades that were very snowy. So by the law of averages, you know, maybe we're getting into a period now of even seeing some lighter winters just by, again, you know, balancing things out. And that's what Mother Nature likes to do. So a lot of complicated factors go into winter outlooks. These are just some of the more primary influences that, that we kind of see for this year. So the one thing a strong El Nino does is it favors more coastal storms. And again, probably not much of a surprise to anybody because we've certainly seen a lot of these from December and into this month in January. Uh, storm systems that form in the Gulf Coast and move up or offshore. Um, a lot of the storms we've had haven't stayed close to the coast. They've actually headed into the Great Lakes and that puts us on the warmer side of the storm. So that's why we've been seeing so much rain and, and warmer temperatures as opposed to snowstorms. But a lot of our stronger winter storms and blizzards fall into this category of what we call these Miller type A nor'easters. Again, the ones that form in the Gulf Coast, they track up the coast or offshore. Uh, and it has to do with that, as I mentioned, that um, Pacific jet stream. It's located across the southern tier of states. So that's where all the storms are being generated this winter. So we do expect to see this pattern continue through into February and probably even early March as we go through the rest of the winter here. So we will have the opportunity certainly for more storms. And you know, if the timing is right, we get the cold air in place, we will get some snow from these as well. So just taking a quick look back again, probably not much of a surprise, but our active pattern started about the week before Christmas. Um, we had almost two and a half inches of rain here in Norwood in the December 17th and 18th storm, along with some pretty strong winds, 50 to 60 miles per hour. Um, and that caused a lot of uh, not just street flooding, but some river flooding and even coastal flooding too, along both the east and, and south coasts of Massachusetts. In early January, we had our first um, measurable snow, I'll call it. Um, we had just over six inches of snow here in Norwood um, on the 6th and 7th. And you can see the heaviest snow is across the interior. Um, some of the higher elevations and out toward the Connecticut River Valley where they had over a foot of snow, but we were just kind of on the edges of the heavy snow area with that storm. Um, you can see really the area just outside of 128 um, into northern Rhode Island did fairly well, but we were just enough into the warmer air that we didn't get those those jackpot snow totals. And then a few days later, it got warm again, a little over two inches of rain here in Norwood along again with strong south southerly winds and um, this caused quite a bit of flooding, especially down in Rhode Island. Uh, they had uh, quite a bit of flooding going on there. And again, along both coasts, we had uh, significant coastal flooding too, and, and a lot of beach erosion uh, from these storms. And these were, this was a storm, again, that went in toward the Great Lakes. So we were on the warmer side of it, as opposed to getting snow. And just after that, uh, January 13th, another day of heavy rain, not quite as much as what we saw before, but a little over an inch and a quarter here in Norwood, heavier amounts down across Rhode Island. And again, a couple of instances of, of coastal flooding along both coasts and a lot of beach erosion, um, especially down along the south coast, uh, where a lot of the dunes, protective dunes, have been eroded from these successive storms. So that's a concern for those communities as we head through the rest of the winter. And then most recently, our January 16th storm, a little bit more snow, just shy of four inches here in Norwood. Um, you can see, you know, about a three to four inch corridor along I-95. And not much, you know, not too much snow anywhere. Um, the snow started during the night, but then mixed with and changed over to rain in most areas um, by the afternoon before it really got cold uh, after the storm and kind of froze everything solid uh, as temperatures dropped into the teens. So I talked about El Nino, and um, again, we are forecasting it to continue through the rest of the winter. If we look at the, um, the months here, these are three-month increments, so DJF is December, January, February. 
JFM is January, February, and March. You can see it's still persisting, but eventually starting to decline, getting more towards this black line, which would be what's called neutral. And you can see on the right, another one of the models is predicting kind of the same thing. We're peaking right about now um, as we head into uh, early February, and then it'll drop off significantly as we head into spring. So it is expected to continue through the rest of the winter, keeping that southern jet stream pretty active. So we do expect to see a continuation of our active weather pattern as we head into February and even March. So when I talk about the jet stream, the one thing we talk about, there are two different patterns, one that favors cold and snow, which is on the left. This is called the Pacific North American Oscillation, and it's an oscillation because the jet stream changes quite a bit um, over you know, week to week. So on the left is when we get our cold weather, we have kind of a dip in the jet stream across the eastern United States and a bump or what's called a ridge out in the west. Um, so this is kind of where we um, are as of the middle of January. We're in a little bit of a cold phase here. Um, but we anticipate by the latter part of January, we're going to flip our pattern back to what's on the right, um, where we have more of a bump or a ridge across the east, and that will bring some milder weather into the area, while it probably gets a little bit more stormy out toward the west coast. So again, this changes over you know, weeks at a time uh, throughout the winter. Um, so this is why we see those warm periods and those cold periods kind of interspersed throughout the winter. Now, if we look at the next two weeks, some of our uh, our computer models that we look at um, tend to do a pretty good job in, in showing us the basic pattern for the jet stream. By the end of January, you'll notice this red shading, which indicates that ridge or that bump across much of the eastern part of the country. And that's going to lead to, you know, a warm up, not saying, you know, we'll be in the 60s, but at least above normal in the 40s, maybe even a couple of days around 50 um, toward the end of January. And then as we head into February, look at the pattern gets a little bit cold again. It doesn't look like anything unusually cold, but you can see this big area of low pressure up over Canada um, that will circulate some colder air across the northern tier of states uh, for the early part of February. So probably what I, I would say, this looks more normal cold as opposed to really bitterly cold weather at this point. Um, but it could also, you know, try and set up a little bit more of a favorable storm track as we get into February. We'll just have to kind of wait and see uh, what happens. But in any event, the trend will be for warmer weather in late January, trending kind of back to normal at least as we get into the first part of February. And our longer range outlook kind of follows this thinking. This is the outlook for the rest of January. On the left, pretty high odds of above normal temperatures in the eastern third of the country, and also a little bit of a wet signal too, especially when you get down toward the Gulf Coast and uh, parts of the Tennessee Valley, a little bit less so up here. But that kind of tells us that there's still a good storm track coming out of the Gulf, and whether or not these storms come up the coast or move offshore remains to be seen, but still looks like kind of an active pattern through the end of January. Although, again, a warmer, maybe more in the way of rain versus snow. And then as we get into our first week or so of February, notice there's a bit of a cooling trend um, with, you know, slight odds favoring below average temperatures across the East Coast. Um, also a little bit of a wet signal in the Southeast showing us again, our storm track might be a little more offshore by that point. Um, but nonetheless, it still will be kind of an active uh, pattern coming out of the Gulf. So obviously things to keep an eye on. So for those of you who want snow, probably looking at, uh, you know, at least the first couple of weeks of February is getting our next, next chances at anything really substantial. And then just to look ahead into spring a little bit, how is it looking for as we head into March and April? Um, the northern tier of states favoring above average temperatures and, you know, no real signal showing us wet or dry, but maybe a slight signal toward the wetter. Again, that, that's showing systems coming out of the Gulf where our, our chances are much higher than average. And, you know, do they move offshore or do they kind of come up the coast? Just remains to be seen, you know, in the days leading up to those storms. But certainly the potential is there for wet weather to continue into the spring. So just to summarize, um, our winter so far has been warmer and wetter than normal. And uh, probably not much of a surprise that we've had below normal snowfall. Our pattern has certainly been dominated by the strong El Nino that's in place. Uh, and that leads to an active southern jet stream. So it does bring a higher chance of East Coast storms. But as I mentioned, most of these storms, because of the pattern, have been tracking to our west across the Great Lakes. That puts us on the warmer east side of the storm. We really want these to move offshore um, for us to have a chance of snow. So if the cold air is in place with these storms, the pattern can favor some big snowstorms. We'll have to see about that. And you know, climate, when we look at our climatology, what's normal, it's that late January, February timeframe when we tend to get most of our snow. So the pattern turning cold again in early February might be a little bit of a help. So again, if you're a snow lover, don't give up hope. There's a lot of winter to go and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But certainly an active pattern would, would uh, 
give us some better chances of seeing some snow as we head into the latter part of the winter. So with that, I thank you for joining us. And if you have any questions or comments, you can certainly reach out to me. Um, my email address is right there. It's joseph.delicarpini at noaa.gov. And again, from the National Weather Service in Boston, we thank you for joining us and we will talk to you next time. Thanks again.